Hello and welcome to CAD Chaos. I'm your host, Michael Smith, and today we're going to be covering the color or appearance hierarchy within SolidWorks. It's a bit confusing, but when you get it all figured out, you'll be able to predict and understand exactly how the color applies to everything you do within SolidWorks. There will be no more confusion. Now, this tutorial is going to take place in two parts. First, we're going to be covering the part side, and then we're going to be coming back and we're going to be covering it on an assembly level. So I've gone ahead and opened up an old project of mine. This is the SolidWorks sword. You can find a video of this within my channel. Now, in order to apply the colors that I have here, I needed to understand the actual hierarchy of how it works in a part. Now, how it works in a part is that the smaller the detail, the higher priority it has. And there's four levels to this total. On the top, you're gonna have your face. Below that, you have your feature. Below that again, you have your body and below that you have your part. Now if you think of these in, as layers of paint, your part is going to be your base coat, your body will be your first coat, your second coat will be the feature, and if you want, your face will be the final coat. So what I'm going to use here is the property manager, and I'm actually going to open up this pane here, display pane, and under here there is an appearance column. Now this appearance column is great for understanding where these colors are originating. Now this sword here has appearance color of a dark gray. Now all parts will have a default color that will be used and that will be displayed right here. Now if I were to open up my solid bodies here, which I have 19 of, you'll notice a few of these have different colors. And everything that doesn't already have a color will then default back to that gray color as long as it doesn't have a color within its feature or on a face. So what we see here is on fillet 10 here, which is our first body, is a green color. And that green color takes priority over your base color as the first coat. Now if I wanted to apply some colors to the chamfers on the hilt of my sword here, there's a couple of different ways of getting to the appearance look. I can right click exactly in this area and you go over here to appearances, click that down and now you kind of see that hierarchy pulled down. You'll see the face that I clicked on, the boss extrude, which is the feature, or the body. Now if I were to apply it to the body, this entire hilt here, that is a part of just that solid body, would change color. Now I don't want to do that, I only want to color the chamfers. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to physically get in here a little bit closer, and I can right click on this chamfer, and I can go down to appearances and color the chamfer. Now another way of getting to that same location is over here using this pane that we brought out. Now I could find this chamfer over here in the history, come on over here, right click within that column and hit the appearances. Now I find using that way is a bit more structured because when we bring in the assembly side of things it will make sense. So I want to apply a blue color to this chamfer Go ahead and click blue, click OK. Now that feature is blue. Now let's say I want to apply a color to the face. The only way of getting there is to actually physically click on that face. So I click on the face, right click, go to appearances. And under this appearance, let's say I want to make it red. Now if I were to remove the color, again from here, it makes a lot of sense if I right click here, go to appearances. If I just wanted to remove the color from the chamfer, which is from the feature, I can go ahead and do that. Or I can remove the color from the part or whatever. The face will not change because it is highest priority on the totem pole. I, the only way to remove a face color is to actually physically click on it, go down to appearances, and either just remove the appearance or remove all appearances which you don't necessarily want to do because then I would change the part color as well. So I'd come in here, I'd remove that. So now how you understand, you understand the color as far as a part level. So now we have to move over to the assembly and understand how that ties into the grand scheme of things. Okay, so now we're in assembly mode and we understand how parts and how the hierarchy works within a part. Now within an assembly, you have an additional option. Now you can color your entire part 
or you can cover your entire subassembly in a specific color and that will only apply within that assembly and it will not change the part. For example, if I wanted to paint this new sword here and I wanted to make it, let's say I wanted to just paint it white. So I'm going to come over here, I apply white and I click OK. You now notice that over here where we're looking in this column, and this is why I thought, this is why I use this tool because it makes a lot of sense. This part's base color is a dark gray, but now we've painted it white. Now, when I right click on this part here, and I pull down the appearances tab here, you start to see new sword and it looks like an assembly. Now to me, this gets a little bit confusing because there's so many options. Whereas on the left hand side here, inside this column, you see a nice little triangle and the triangle on the upper left next to that part is your assembly color with the part color being on the bottom right. To me, that is a much cleaner way than your stack up over here on the right. However, you can use whichever one you prefer. Now, just because I've painted that white, when I open up that part, it's going to retain its original colors because that color is applied only on the assembly level. Now, moving back to the assembly, if I came over here and let's say I wanted to apply a specific color, for example, I wanted to make, oh, let's say Mir 7 here or the actual hilt itself. I want to make this hilt a blue color. I can do that because I can edit this part in real time. But what you see is that the assembly color is covering that entire part. However, the part that is not covered in our example down here, I changed that hilt color to blue. So you end up changing something that you don't physically see. So it's always a good thing to keep in mind that you don't really want to change the part colors within an assembly mode because you could be changing things that you don't understand and if you are using this part over and over and over again throughout many projects professionally you can end up changing that color across the entire board. So with that in mind, let's move over to the Kuka robot here. Now this Kuka robot has no color, so by default it moves to the next thing in the hierarchy, which would be its parts. And all of these parts are actually inserted, just dumb blocks in this case. They're not, it's something I imported. So when I open up this part, it would be orange because that inserted part is orange and I can apply to the specific part if I wanted to come down here to appearances I could make this white if I so choose however when you open up this part it is still going to be orange because it is on the part level that it is orange. Now if I wanted to apply a color to this entire assembly, all I'd have to do is come up to the assembly here, come on over to appearances, and I can apply a color across the board to that assembly. Now if I want to remove that color, all you have to do is go back and do the exact opposite. Go into Appearances and remove Appearance. Finally, if you have an entire um, giant assembly and you want to apply everything to the same color, you can do that as well.
So there you go. That is the color hierarchy, understanding how it all works and ties together. If you've liked what you've seen, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what tutorials you'd like to see in the future. I will be uploading new ones or projects every week to bi-weekly. Thank you for watching.